Good afternoon and welcome to the latest in our series of live careers webinars brought to you by the Hertfordshire Opportunities Portal that is www.hopinto.co.uk. Um, Hop is a platform that we hope all of you will use so you can see a demonstration there of how to use it. It's designed specifically for young people and students who go to school in Hertfordshire to find out about particular careers that you might be interested in um, where there are current vacancies and opportunities at the moment. So the demonstration you're seeing at the moment there is how to use our careers directory section. So if, as I'm sure many of you watching this live at the moment want to do, if you wanted to find out um, about careers in veterinary science, you could click through to the careers directory. Uh, this will bring up some very general information about careers in veterinary science there, including the average salaries, the sorts of qualifications that you might need to do. And it'll even tell you whether there are any current live vacancies in Hertfordshire or any courses that you might be interested in. But you're gonna have a really, really informative session today on this live webinar that I think will probably answer most of those questions for you anyway. So the purpose of these webinars is to give you the opportunity to hear directly from employers or employees, or in this case, people who are responsible for um, the Royal Veterinary College's fantastic courses that they can offer uh, within the county. You'll have the opportunity to hear directly from them about their own experiences, and you'll be able to ask them questions as well, to, to actually interact with them. Um, the way that you do interact is you don't actually have to, we don't hear your voice, and I should tell you as well that we can't see any of you. Hopefully you can see and hear all of us, uh, but we can't see or hear any of you. If you want to ask questions, you can do. On your dashboard, uh, you should see that there's a questions tab. So if you click on that and open it out, there will be a text box where you can type in your questions. So if you're listening to the presentation that you're going to hear and you want to ask any of the questions, um, please do. If you want to direct your question to anyone in particular, just put their name at the front of it so I'll know. Um, no one else will see the questions except for me, so they will be sent in anonymously. Now, as you, um, as you as you'll be aware, today's webinar is about careers in veterinary science. So veterinary science is part of the overall animal care industry, which in the UK accounts for over 13,000 businesses and over 90,000 employees. We're very lucky in Hertfordshire that we've got the world's oldest um, veterinary college in the English speaking world um, based in Hertfordshire. It's in Brookmans Park. And we have got a fabulous panel for you today to share their experiences. Uh, so I'm just asking just to wave at you when I mention their name uh, now. But Lucy um, is now well employed by the Royal Veterinary College and she works as part of their outreach program. So she'll be able to tell you about all the different types of courses uh, that the college can offer. Um, Remy has recently completed a degree in um, veterinary nursing, uh, but now she's a bit of a button for punishment. She's going back for another three or four years to um, study veterinary medicine, which would allow us to become a animal surgeon, I believe. And then Seth, who is a part of the RVC alumni, who's um, who's based up north, uh, he's a current practicing vet, so he's got lots of very interesting stories and experiences to share um, with you. This session is being recorded, so if you can't watch all of it now, or perhaps you can watch all of it, but you want to watch it back, it will be available on the HOP website um, via YouTube. And in fact, when it goes on to YouTube, if there are, we will open up the comment section. So if there's any questions you'd like to ask um, or type in there, we could then forward them on to Lucy, Remy or Seth subsequently and try and get an answer for you as well. Um, so I do encourage you to answer, ask any questions that you might want to know as we go through. Um, at the end of the session, there will be a poll as well. We'll be putting that up on the screen just to ask you um, how informative you found the session and hopefully it's something that you'll have, you'll have found really interesting. So um, without any further ado, I'm gonna hand over to Lucy and then Remy and Seth in turn, and they are gonna give you a really informative presentation. And um, then we will start ask, asking your questions um, at the end of the presentation. So Lucy, over to you. Hello, so I believe you should be able to see my slides now, is that correct? you can is that all right can you see everything i think that's a yes um yeah. i am going to be talking you through a little bit about animal science about the different career opportunities that there are specifically the ones that we offer as degrees at the rvc and so that's where as i said that's where i work but it's also where i actually did my second degree my master's degree in wild animal biology and i specialized in working with wild cats 
So if you do have any questions about that, please feel free to ask me because I do like talking about it. Um, so this is what we're going to be covering today. We're going to be talking about what is the Royal Veterinary College? You know, he's, Gareth has just mentioned that this is a university, that it's, part of it is in Hertfordshire, right on possibly your doorstep. So what are we, who are we? Um, what can you study to work in animal science, specifically again, the ones that we offer at the RVC? And then you're going to be hearing from a veterinary nursing graduate and a veterinary medicine graduate. So I'm going to explain a little bit about the differences between those and Remy will help explain it as well. So what is the RVC? As was said, we are actually the oldest vet school in the English-speaking world. We're actually the second oldest vet school in the world, uh, but the first one was in France. So we're the oldest in the English-speaking world. We were founded in 1791 because of a very famous racehorse, which sounds a bit daft, but essentially there was a horse called Eclipse who won all his horse races. He actually was so good that everyone start, stopped betting against him because they knew he would win. And so he retired, became a spire, and many years later, after he died, there was a group of people who decided to do a post-mortem on him to see why he was so good, why was he so fast. And they found that he had quite a large heart, which obviously very efficiently pumped blood around his body and got oxygen to his muscle. After that, a lot of people realised that the study of animals, understanding how they work and what we need to care for them, is really useful in terms of you know horse racing but loads of other areas of the economy and how we work with animals so we were founded because of that horse which i think is quite fun um, we are actually the number one vet school in europe and we are the second in the world and so we're quite world leading in terms of our work with animals but we're also worldly world leading in research we research everything from like diseases of the bone up to rhino populations. So there's loads of really cool things that we offer. But where is it? So you may recognize this. If you don't recognize it, you can probably tell where it is anyway, uh, in Camden. We are actually a couple of streets away from this very, very well-known uh, tourist destination. We are down the road on Royal College Street, which is a really easy one to remember. That's our building, and that is actually the original site of the RBC when we were founded. But way back then, 229 years ago, Camden was just a tiny little village on the outskirts of London. And so we could keep our sheep, our cows, and our horses there. Obviously, now we can't. There's not enough space anymore. So we have another campus, which you might be familiar with. So this is our Hawkshead campus, and it's up in Hertfordshire and it's about a 10 minute drive away from the Potter's Bar station. Uh, so you may have seen this before, you may have driven past it and this is actually the site where our nurses work but it's also where our Queen Mother Animal Hospital is which is a referral hospital, our equine hospital for horses as well as our working farm which is where our students learn uh, all about the sheep, the cows, the horses, the pigs and the chickens that are housed there. So that's where we are, but what can you study? So to become a vet, this is something that lots of people get a little bit confused by, you know, what routes should they take if they want to work in animal health care? To become a vet, you have to study veterinary medicine at degree level. So you have to, it's because it's a protected profession. Remy will talk a little bit about the different uh, governance that you know they check up on the vets and the vet nurses later on but you have to do a degree to become a vet and you can do it through several different routes one route would be doing a bachelor of veterinary medicine degree so be vet med degree we like to squash things down it's not great you know i'm dyslexic i sometimes can't remember them but this is essentially the veterinary medicine degree it's five years long and to get into it, the entry requirements at A level are three A's. We also have a gateway course. And if you're interested in working as a vet, do look at the gateway course because you'll notice that although it's six years long, the entry requirements are three C's. And that is because we realize that there are people who will be amazing vets, like brilliant vets, but because of personal circumstances, they may not be able to achieve the three A's required of the five-year course. So if you meet certain personal circumstances, such as 
you're the first person in your family to go to university, uh, you have low household income, or you may be coming from an area where not many people go to university, those may mean that you're eligible to apply to the gateway course. And that is six years, first year you kind of getting used to university level learning, and then you go in with the rest of the five year long event med students. So you graduate as a vet just the same. If you're doing uh, A-levels, you have to do, for these particular subjects, you have to do biology and chemistry. But the third subject can be anything apart from general studies. It could be maths, if you wanted to do maths. Or it could be drama or French. It doesn't really matter. As long as you will enjoy it and do well in it, that's all we ask for. We do also have contextual offers. So again, if you're interested in becoming a vet, and maybe you don't, uh, you're not eligible for Gateway, but you're still interested, have a little look and see if you're eligible for a contextual offer. And that is usually down to which school you go to. So that might be a slightly lower entry requirement. So that's veterinary medicine. But we also teach, very, very cute photo, veterinary nursing. And Remy's going to be explaining the exact differences between a vet and a vet nurse a little bit later on. But if you're interested in vet nursing, we have two pathways. You have the foundation to veterinary nursing, which is a three year long degree. And to get in, you need a C and a D at A level. Or we have the BSc veterinary nursing, which is four years long, and you need BCC at A level. Both of these qualify you as a vet nurse when you graduate. Essentially, the, uh, B vet, uh, the BSc vet nursing, which again, Rem will talk about a little later on, is an extra year to get you really to quit animal science and you kind of do a bit of your own research as well. To do these, you have to do biology at A level. We do also accept a number of different qualifications, such as level three extended diploma. So have a little look if you are studying something like that. But we also teach biosciences. So <laughs> that you might recognize the picture of me on a Land Rover because I studied biosciences at the RBC. And we have a number of different pathways, including bioveterinary science, biological science, animal biology, behavior, welfare, and ethics. And for these, you need A, B, B, or three Bs at A level, kind of depending on which sciences you take. And you need biology or chemistry at A level to get onto these pathways. So those are all of the things that we offer at the RBC. And you might notice that they all have something in common, which is animals. Everything at the RBC teaches you to work with animals, but they all teach you to work in a slightly different way and in slightly different circumstances. So we've got here veterinary surgeons and veterinary medicine graduates, we've got a vet nurse and we've got a bioscientist. These may all work together on a certain project, but they have different roles. And Remy will be talking about the differences between the vet and the vet nurse. But I wanted to just clear up the differences between these two professions that work in the veterinary healthcare area, so vets and vet nurses, and bioscientists. There are a few things that vets can do that bioscientists aren't allowed to do because it's specific to their training. So that is surgery and that is prescribing medicine for the obvious reason of both of those done wrongly can harm animals. So only vets and the people that they work with can do that. I'm a bioscientist and I can but we may work together in certain projects. Also, the real kind of basic difference is that bioscientists, even if they're working with animals, will work at a population level. So we'll be thinking about the conservation of all of these animals or the health of all of these animals, maybe a disease that affects them. You might be looking at uh, specific animals taking samples, maybe you're looking at hormones in a particular species, but you'll be looking at a population level. Whereas people who work in vets, vets and vet nurses, they will be working with individual animals and trying to make that individual animal better, if that makes sense. Obviously, we've got Q&A at the end of this. So if you've got any questions about what the differences are, please do ask, because I know it can be a little bit confusing. And there we have our veterinary medicine, vet nursing and biosciences. And you can actually specialize in these subjects. So even though all vets will have done a B vet med degree or the gateway program, they'll have gone through that degree, you can specialize afterwards. So for example, we have Fabian here, who is an exotics vet. 
he is a veterinary medicine degree and he then specialized to work with things like people's pet lizards, birds, rabbits, and some wildlife, like say hedgehogs. This is Issa here, just below him, and she is actually a farm vet. So she graduated with a veterinary degree and then she specialized to work with farms and she actually drives to farms, visits the animals and helps them out there. So she has a really, really unusual job. In the middle here, we've got Matt Rendell, and Matt is actually a vet nurse, and he was the vet nurse for the London Zoo. So he got to do all of that work with all those amazing animals at London Zoo. But again, he did a veterinary medicine degree. Here at the bottom with the glasses, we have Sharon Kendall, who is a bioscientist and works on the uh, TB disease. So that's a disease that can affect humans and animals, and she works on the genetics of it. And above her, sat on, you might recognize it's the same Land Rover that I was sat on. That is my friend Emily Madsen, who is also a bioscientist, but specialized in conservation. So she works out in the Maasai Mara, trying to help animals like cheetah, uh, leopard, and lion. So these are all things that you can do in the realm of animal science. And so now we're gonna hear from a graduate of the veterinary nursing course, and she's gonna tell you a little bit about her experiences and what it means to study these at the RBC. So I'm handing over now to Remy. Uh, yeah, you should be able to see my screen now. Yeah, fantastic. Okay, Freddie, yeah. cool. Uh, perfect. So uh, my name's Remy, and I kind of just want to go through my journey at RBC and basically explain how I got here and what I'm doing. Um, so hopefully it might inspire you, or um, hopefully if you have some qu any questions at the end of our presentations, feel free to ask. Um, so I'm kind of localish to you. Um, I'm East Lon from East London, born and raised, never left. Um, and I've just finished my veterinary nursing degree at the RBC. So I spent I did a four year course, the Bachelor of Sciences degree, um, and that does mean I've also been a qualified, so a registered veterinary nurse for one year. And also it's a bit of a change in career because they are different careers. I'm now studying veterinary medicine this year. So I'm doing the uh, the graduate accelerated course, which is four years uh, rather than the standard five year course as well. Um, and this is me going back to uni just in September. Um, so things have changed, but it's still exciting to um, go back in just for practicals as well. So I'll start from the beginning. Um, so my GCSEs, I kind of had an idea that I wanted to um, go into veterinary work with animals, um, but my uh, GCSEs I picked weren't really, you know, um, situated towards that. Because I did the standard maths, English, and the, the double science as well. Um, so I also did business studies, history, drama, and media, which is doesn't relate uh, to anything um, in veterinary. I was also quite active as well, so I did a lot of sports. Um, we even did handball, and we're really lucky we um, got to, um, play up each in some championships and ended up um, representing London as well. So that was really fun. And um, it's only when I started to do my work experience, I think that was in about year 11, um, I did two weeks at the Animal Sanctuary. Um, so I started working with, it was literally, literally a range of animals. I uh, would have horses, cats and dogs, chickens. Um, so that was like my first insight into working with animals then. So then we move on to A levels, and that's when we normally start to think about what I wanted to do. As so my work experience really helped me um, to thinking I did actually want to work with animals. Um, so I think the best place to start is probably getting work experience because that's the main thing. Um, I did have to apply to the same um, place about five different times. So I'd say one piece of advice: be persistent, be annoying, send emails, phone calls, keep asking places because I had to apply. To same place five times. Um, I was still doing sports. I did netball, and also in my, I could say, my spare time, um, as I started to get ready to apply to university, I set up a lot of eth ethical debates with my friends. Um, so with my A levels, this is where it starts to concentrate on science. I did chemistry, biology, and history. Um, and then history, I guess you could kind of the odd one out, and also to visit AS level if you're brave. Um, so history. Um, I, I just found it quite different because it's fun, it was um, assignment based as well, and I just preferred uh, just a little bit of change from the science background because it's nice to have more of a story than facts, so I thought that was really cool. 
um, I did actually reset my A-levels as well. Um, and I think that was really beneficial for me because it just made me more prepared going to university. Um, and I met new friends as well. And um, yeah, I just think it prepared me a lot more having to reset my A-levels. Um, so again, I said I did netball. So this is like a netball academy I did. That's the only sport I did. Um, and also we did a biology. I had got to um, go to Epping Forest and do a mini project there. So that's like my first base to ever doing a project. And I'm really glad I got to do that in biology because you actually end up doing that um, in some of the veterinary courses. So you kind of got a little bit of bases there. So my work experience, I uh, got to do a few days at a riding school. Um, also, I was very lucky I got to spend a week at the RBC and I got to do a dissection. Um, and also I got to attend the uh, night at the vet college, which we um, run at least twice a year. So that was really cool. So uh, when that's able to run one again, I definitely recommend that. And also, like I said, I applied to the same practice at least five times and I ended up being a practice assistant after school. So that was fun. It was a lot of cleaning, um, but you got to see behind the scenes. It's kind of where I moved up as well, um, as well as I'll go into. So let's start from the university. I got in. Um, it is a long process, but it is well worth it. So after doing interviews and uh, sending my work experience references, um, that's my start of my veterinary nursing course. So four years goes by very quickly. And it also means you qualify as a veterinary nurse in your third year. And um, this is me in my greens. And you always hear nurses say that when they qualify, they get to wear all green. Um, so throughout my time at university, I was really lucky because um, I got to work at the Queen Mother Hospital. And that's where I work part time now as well as a qualified nurse. Um, so again, that's one of the biggest veterinary spinal hospitals in Europe. And literally the cases that you hear about, the weird and wonderful ones, that's sometimes where they're going to go so it's amazing um, and I also got to carry out another research project and this was in my final year um, and I just said it as well I got to present that at the British Veterinary Nursing Association this year and also it's not just about work all the time you do have time to chill out so um, I got to do some more netball again um, I also got to be part of an interprofessional club that gets vets and nurses to work together. And also my first year, um, I did like a lot of talks, um, lot, watched a lot of talks from the Veterinary Business Society. And again, with Netball, went on tours to Rome, Amsterdam, and also got to um, set up the Student Veterinary Nursing Congress as well, which, which has run twice. So um, because I'm crazy and, um, and I think I kind of wanted to go more into the surgery route, I preferred to change of careers um I, I started to go back to university again um so i am now doing the four-year accelerated program and um, because i have a relevant um, um science degree so throughout my last year nursing um i also had to do additional work experience in my final year um so as you can see here um i got to do a little bit of dairy um we were working I did do a placement on a farm as well, so I did a lot of lambing and they also had cows there, which is amazing. So it's nice to be able to change from small animal um, into working with my farm animals as well. And also got to work in laboratory as well, so it's a bit more behind the scenes. So just to um, clarify the difference between a vet and a nurse, um, I'd say for a vet nurse, the main role is just basically to care for that patient. And also you do um, do consultations with the owners as well. So you're not just stuck behind the scenes. So roles are quite varied. Um, you're basically like an anaesthetist. You do radiography. So you're taking x-rays. You're a receptionist. Again, you do cleaning, um, which is uh, basically infection control. So very important. Um, in this day and age. Um, you're also a grief counsellor because animals, especially spinal surgery, they can be put to sleep. So you do spend time with the owners. Um, you're also a surgical assistant. So you get to scrub in and make sure you're sterile and help in surgery. You're a hydrotherapist and you also do laboratory work. So like a phlebotomist, it's just a fancy word of saying taking blood. Um, like I said, you do nursing consultations as well. So you get to be at the forefront as well. So basically, a nurse cannot prescribe, diagnose, perform surgery that enters into a body cavity. And um, we're basically, just like vets, we're governed by the um, Royal College of Veterinary Surgeons. And we are actually responsible for our own actions as well. Um, so we can work with small animals, equine, exotics. We can go into management. Um, we can specialise in those areas we want to and also go into teaching. 
Uh, just as a side note as well, um, there is another option if you don't want to do the degree route. Um, some nurses, you um, can apply for like a level level three diploma. So this um, this is, can be up to a two year course. Oh, screen's gone. This can be um, up to usually around two years. Um, the only difference is it's a different level of qualification. It's just something that um, not many nurses might be aware of. So there are two different routes into profession. Um, so again, contrasting to that, to a vet, it can be either a five to six year, year degree. Um, and that's, you, you don't have to just work with animals. You can literally um, go into government work if you wanted to. Um, you can go to laboratory work. and But the main basis is that you can diagnose, prescribe, consult and perform surgery. And also you can delegate some tasks well to other members of the team. So your veterinary nurses, your patient care assistants as well. And um, as a vet, you're responsible for all those animals within your care as well. So it's a kind of disparate, different type of responsibility. Um, so um, yeah, that's basically vet nursing and, and a little bit of veterinary um, in a nutshell. Fantastic. And now we're gonna go on to Seth and I'm gonna host the slides for Seth. Uh, so Seth is going to be doing a very, very cool next slide, please. So if that's all right, am I able to post? Yeah, I think it is. Oh. Maybe need to wait a second. I'll be doing a Chris Whitty impression. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Perfect. So go ahead, Seth. Excellent. So my name's Seth. I'm a practicing vet up in Cheshire at the moment. So I've been qualified for just over a year now. I've um, been working in my practice since last October. So I've done a full, a full season in the farming life. Um, so I qualified last year in the veterinary medicine degree. So that does allow me to work in small animal, with cats and dogs, equine, with horses. But I chose to work in the farm field. Um, my job is just farm. There are some jobs where you can do a little bit of everything if you want, um, but I decided it's complicated enough already for me, so I want to just work with mostly cows, mostly dairy cows, but I do also see some alpacas and some sheep and things like that. Um, before going to university, I my A-levels were biology, chemistry and maths and geography. Um, the, I did four just because my sixth form really encouraged it. Um, you don't need to do four. Um, it doesn't necessarily help in any way, it's just something that I enjoyed geography and maths and couldn't really choose between. Um, really enjoyed doing the geography. It's actually coming quite handy now because a lot of the geography, one of the modules was on report writing and on analysing um, kind of data and what to do with data. Um, and that's actually something I use in my day to day life. So it's quite quite nice that all those years ago actually, actually helps me now. Um, I was very fortunate as well in my, my secondary school, had a really small educational farm. This had three cows, uh, eight sheep, two goats, 30 chickens. Um, and so that's what really got me into wanting to be a vet. Uh, because it was around the time, end of my GCSEs, beginning A-levels, I was deciding what I wanted to do. I knew I really liked science. I also knew I really liked animals. And being able to work on that uh, small school farm kind of really cemented um, my future. So my day-to-day -day job, next slide. Um, as I said, mostly dairy animals in this part of the country, um, producing mostly liquid milk. So that's milk that you buy in the supermarkets. But also a lot of our farms all produce what's called solid milk. So that's the milk that goes into yogurts, into cheeses, um, and they're kind of whey protein powders that you buy for if you're going to the gym. Um, so those farms would actually work in slightly different ways. Um, and some farms would also have sheep alongside. Some farms have um, kind of workers open farms so the public go along that you may have visited there's some in some in Hertfordshire so all the farms kind of operate in different ways and I really enjoy having that kind of challenge each farm being different each farm having different priorities um, on the left here we've got two of my recent successes so the top guy um, that was a carving I did and then the bottom that was a, a midnight Caesar so you can just about see a kind of clip mark a kind of pink bit on the side of the cow there so that's the calf was too big to come out um, the back way so I had to do an emergency operation at the side and, and both are doing really well now which is good so as well as being kind of a lot of sometimes boring data looking at how well the milk's going why animals getting sick 
the job also involves kind of exciting emergencies and things like that. Um, but as as exciting as those can be, you've always got to kind of keep at the back of your mind why maybe one farm is having an awful lot of things going wrong. Why am I doing so many operations here? So you need to be a very good communicator working with the farmers and say, you know, this is a third operation I've done your farm in a month. Let's talk about what's going wrong. So there's a lot of skills that you need to be a vet, a lot of communication and, and things like that. Next slide. As well as um, cows, this pig on the right is actually a, a, a house pig that I had to go and see in the center of Manchester. So you get called to all kinds of, of animals. Um, uh, I'm sure they had a, a vet who was closer, a small animal vet, um, but by the time you kind of you're working for a few years if you're a small animal vet i don't think they'd be too comfortable going out and seeing a pig in the house so i had to trim this guy's uh feet he wasn't a i'm sure he meant well but he wasn't a friend of this chap so it's just had a little bit of sedation here just to make him a little bit more amenable just so i can clip his feet and give him a little pedicure and give him a health check while doing it next slide so as well as um, working where I am now, um, out in the, in the dairy country in Cheshire, the vet degree also offers a lot of flexibility, a lot of work alongside human doctors, a lot of work alongside um, veterinary biosciences. So this bottom right image here, um, this was when I got a, a scholarship to go out to South Africa and, and do some cool work out there. And this is doing a epidemiological studies so looking at the spread of disease um, they recently had a kind of goat flu go through the goats last year sadly it killed quite a few goats it, it managed to be controlled quite quickly but this is going around we're asking the farmers you know a year ago where were you selling your goats where did they travel to who did you buy your goats from trying to work out how it spread through the community why it spread so quickly and also try and work out what it means to people like some of these people, the goats were the most valuable possession they had. So it was very important for us to work out how important the animals were to them. Um, and then these, these cattle here, they're right next to the Kruger National Park. Um, we're actually foot and mouth, which is a disease some of you may have heard about. It happened quite a long time ago now, 2001. Um, that is a very bad disease in the UK, but it's still present in South Africa in the wild animals. So we were checking the cattle to see if check uh, hadn't spread over into the cattle because it'd be very bad if it ever did that. Um, so there's there's a lot of opportunities to do lots of cool stuff. Next slide. Uh, this was the same same trip where we're doing a rhino census. So finding out how many rhinos were still in this part of the park, finding out if, uh, if any have been lost to poaching over the last few months. And then finding out how healthy they are, how old were they, how much did they weigh, did they have any calves, were they breeding, and all things like that. Also taking little um, notches of the horn so that if they ever do get poached and the horn turns up somewhere, um, somewhere down the line, if it gets seized by police, they can actually trace back the horn that the police sees and work out exactly where it came from and they can work out how it got there. So there's a lot of really interesting um, extra things you can do with the, the vet degree. Um, and you can end up working alongside human doctors in their fields and you can work alongside other scientists as well as just working with cats and dogs and working with cows like I do. Um, yeah, and that's the end of my... Fantastic. I think we're now heading over to any of your questions that you've been sending in. Um, and just so you know, you can ask us anything about, you know, why did Seth or Remy choose the RVC? Is there anywhere else you can study veterinary in the UK? Um, what was it like as a student learning about animal science? Anything that you want at all, we're here to answer your questions. So I think I'm handing back to Gareth to post. Thank you, thank you, and thank you to all of you. That's a really fantastic and really, really informative presentation there that I think really sets out um, a lot of things that um, our audience at the moment will have wanted to know. So as Lucy said, do keep those questions coming in. We've had some questions come in already. We're going to try and answer as many as we as we, as we can before 4.30. So do keep, do keep your questions coming in. Uh, so you type them in the questions tab. And if you want them specifically to be answered by any one of the panellists, just make it clear. Otherwise, we'll, we'll try and work this out. Um, so the first question I've got, which I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask it to Remy, actually. When did you know you wanted to become a vet? 
Um, I think when most people want to go into veterinary, first of all, most people just think it's just vet, that's straight it. Um, so I'll start off with why I want to go into a career and then I'll branch off. Um, so my cat's not here at the moment. Um, I've got a horrible ginger cat called Tiger. And uh, oh God, it's like several years ago. Um, he basically had got into a cat fight as he does. Sorry to my neighbours. Um, and he had an abscess on his back leg. So basically there was just an infection in, in his back leg. So I started to take him to the vets. Um, and as I said, he's horrible. To, he's horrible to handle, especially outside. Um, but he just fell in love um, at the practice, and the nurses were handling as if they were that, as if um, that those were the owners, and the vets were handling lovely. And I think it's just that that moment where it clicks, like, oh my god, the way you handle my cat is amazing. And they're just like very attentive to me, and also um, and also Tiger as well, to make sure everything's all okay, and that we're fine giving medication at home. Um, I think it's kind of from there that's just like sparked like oh my god like you know this would be really cool to go into um so that's kind of where um that's what opened me up to it um so when I that's actually where I started to apply to get into the veterinary profession um so that's when you start to join around to watch the nurses um so they got to do really cool things like taking blood um putting in catheters helping to do surgery as well with the vets that was really cool and I liked that the way that with the nurses you spent more time with the animal and compared to the vet it was a bit more problem solving um, so at that time I was more drawn to the nurses and um, as I've kind of started to be a nurse myself and go into profession more I think I've and I got to see different specialties of veterinary medicine um, as I got to see surgery especially more like high level I started to enjoy that a bit more um, so that's kind of where I wanted to be able to change routes to be able to like diagnose prescribe and do surgery and so kind of change from a I guess you could say like care role to a bit more of a problem solving type of role um but i've got the best of both worlds i think which is really cool yeah good no thank you as well so very much you know from your own personal experiences of your um of, of your pet cat that was the thing that first gave you that interaction with a nurse to make you think that that was something that you wanted to do what about for you seth um i suppose similar similar kind of age i think um and uh my, my rest of my family are actually allergic to, to animals so we never really had many pets when i was younger um but it was just that kind of and the kind of when i was 14 15 middle middle of my gcse's and i was kind of realizing what i what subjects i really enjoyed and just trying to work out what could i do with those subjects i also really love working outside um like i'm a keen runner and cyclist and things so i i don't like being inside all day so finding a job where I could do both sciences and work outside, and then the more time I spent with animals at the school farm, I thought this is this is really cool being able to do all of those things together. Um, that's what drew me in, and and yeah, it's kind of a GCSE A level time that I realised this is pretty good. Yeah, good. Okay. Well, I mean, Lucy, same question for for you. I know you're not sort of a practicing vet now, but you obviously had background in it. What was when did you realise that this is something you wanted to go into? Well, yeah, so, I, um, so I'm a wild animal biologist, so slightly different to a vet, so it does make quite a surgery vibing, I can't do. Um, but I actually think about being a vet when I was younger. I've had pets my whole life. I've had dogs, cats, rabbits, guinea pigs, rats, everything. And so I've seen the animal, and I knew that I wanted to work with animals when I was older. And I said that to my school, and they said, oh, you can be a vet. Kind of vet and zookeeper are sometimes they're the ones that people come to and they're the ones that they know. So I went and did veterinary work experience and to get on to the uh, vet courses and the vet nurse courses in the RS to do work experience so you can see what the profession is like. And I actually realised that this wasn't the kind of animal care that I wanted to do. I actually wanted to do things with populations and conservation and ecology. Um, and so I ended up doing sciences at A-level, with a bit of time abroad, I randomly moved to Japan, why not? Uh, I came back, I did a biology degree, and I specialised in working with wildlife. The only one of those people who, in the past, I've done uh, stuff to do with the health of wildlife populations, whereas that to work with individual animal cases. Um, but you meet people at the RBC, both staff and students, who some of them have wanted to be vet since they can possibly remember, and it's the only thing they've ever wanted to do. Some people have been recently, maybe even during their A-levels, so it's something that they might be interested in. 
So we have loads of people in the background that they are using. Yeah, okay, right. So some of the questions that are coming in. Um, Remy, what age did you start your work experience? Did you hear that, Remy? Oh yeah, sorry, my internet's going a bit out. Um, so I started my work experience about 16, I think. Um, so this is technically my second job. A bit side note, as my first job, I think I was working at a go-kart go track. Um, so completely unrelated. But um, yeah, like I said, I was very persistent at this first practice um, and I kept applying, so please let me in. Um, and eventually I was lucky. And like I said, kind of start from the bottom, I guess. Um, but that's where you get to see everything. Cleaning, helping the nurses, helping the vets get the animals out. Um, and yeah, feeding stuff like that. And that's where you get to see different roles and decide what's actually good for you. And if you even like to work with animals as well, because it is a bit different. Yeah, okay. Uh, Liz, there's a number of questions here specifically about courses and qualifications, so I'm going to throw these all over to you. Um, firstly, so to become a veterinary surgeon, do you have to take the veterinary medicine course? So, there are eight places in the UK that you can learn to become a vet, and uh, they're all, you can see them online, but there is whether I can remember it right. RVC, Cambridge, Bristol, Glasgow, Edinburgh, Liverpool, Nottingham, and Surrey. Ha -ha. Um, so those are the places that you need to become a vet in the UK, and you have to do that degree if you want to be a vet surgeon. If you go through the way that Remy is, she's doing it for second degree. You can go through the Gateway program, which is essentially just a gateway year to get into that degree. You have to do that one. It's governed by the RCVS, the Royal College of Veterinary Surgeons, because it's like a practice profession because of the skills that you're expected to have as a vet. Um, and so, yes, you do have to do that degree to become a vet surgeon. But for vet nursing, there are other opportunities as well. As Remy said, you can either do the degree route or you could do things like apprenticeship internship where you work and go to college at the same time. Yep, yeah, okay. Um... Sorry, will the gateway course lead you to becoming a vet? Probably just, yep, answer that it's one. Like, sometimes it's yep. like foundation year. It's not really foundation year, but it's kind of like that middle bit. And then you just graduate as a vet, same as anyone else. Okay, these three questions are all largely related around A-levels and A-level choices. So I'm going to ask all three of them um, and then you can kind of summarise the answers. So firstly, if you don't get the A-levels to get into university to become a surgeon, could you do a degree in nursing and further it from there? Secondly, what qualifications do you need to be a vet and a veterinary nurse? Which I think we probably covered, but if we just summarise those. And then thirdly, why do you do chemistry? And do you have to take it at A-level? So what's the relevance of, of chemistry? I think we can perhaps see where biology fits in. So do you want to have a go answering those ones, Lucy? I'll answer a couple of them and then I'll go over to Remy about how you can get into veterinary fitness, because that's exactly what she's doing. Um, so in terms of you have to do, if you're doing A-levels and you're going into veterinary medicine, so to be a vet, not a vet nurse, you have to do biology and chemistry. Um, you can also do lots of other different so there are some like these specs in animal management that we take, there's a level three expensive diploma that we take, and they're all listed on our website. So you can just Google RVC, find the degree you're interested in, see which uh, our entry requirements are. In terms of why we need chemistry, it's because, and I think kind of um, Seth's picture has kind of pointed it out quite well, that when you're a vet, with medicine and some medicines can be quite dangerous if you don't use them correctly and so for Seth he I mean, I mean I'm, I'm guessing here but you will have to figure out the amount of medication that you need to give an animal without necessarily being able to like properly weigh it or you know you have to know exactly how much to give it to maybe sedate it but not injure it so you have to be really, you have to understand how those chemicals will work in that animal's body and, and what's called pharmacokinetics. So you have to have a decent understanding of chemistry. That's actually one other reason that I didn't go into veterinary is because I'm going to chemistry. But even if chemistry isn't like the thing that you really, really love and you much prefer biology, there are lots of people like that in the RBC and you get taught how to do all the chemistry and how to work with medications and how to do lab tests and blood tests. So don't worry too much about that. Remy, do you want to talk about the route through uh, to yes. that? 
Um, yeah, so I'm doing the Graduate Accelerator course, um, which is a four year course. So you kind of like, kind of mash in your pre clinical years into one. Um, so no pressure there. Um, but no, it's good because everyone comes from, I'm not the only nurse on the course, but it's also other people that have done bioveterinary sciences, some at RBC, some around, some around the world, to be honest. Um, so that's just an, another example of like a relevant um, science degree um so everyone's got different um experiences or some everyone's got different experiences um and different degrees so um you can do a nursing degree a bachelor of science degree to get in if you wanted to um i think personal experiences you need to be aware of they are di completely different courses um and also you still got to take out depending on um you still have to take out time to prepare to do your work experience um and also what's going to say um it depends as well usually from second degree they're not usually funded um with by student finances so that's something um that definitely should be brought thought about before if you want to go that route um but like i said doing practical work experience at this time that's the best time to, to be able to realize what you like what you don't like as well um yeah you get to see both worlds yeah Good. OK. Um, do you have to have had work experience to get onto the course? So um, I will answer that and then I'll ask Seth um, a bit about what kind of just a very varied what work experience you did. Uh, I know it was a while ago now. <laughs> um, so to get on to the veterinary medicine five year course or either of the vet nursing courses, you have to do work experience. And we're aware that obviously the world situation right now might mean that it's difficult to find work experience, so we are taking that into account. But on a usual year, what we ask is that by the application deadline, which if you're applying for veterinary medicine, is the 15th of October. If you're applying for veterinary nursing or gateway, it's the 15th of January. By that deadline, you have 70 hours of clinical work experience, so that's in a vet. That's a kind of the equivalent of two weeks of full-time work. So that's in a vet, and then 20 hours of non-clinical work experience. So that's like things on farms or various other places. So Seth, what work experience did you do? Oh, it was a while ago now, but um, so I spent uh, one week with my local uh, small animal vets, and then two weeks. Um, so I live quite close to Cambridge, just south of Cambridge. I was lucky enough to spend two weeks at the Cambridge Vet School in their hospital. So that's like similar to the RVC hospital. It's a kind of referral one. So I did lots of complicated stuff. Um, and then I also did some time at local stables and then also did a little bit of lambing at a nearby farm as well as the school farm where I was on for a few years. Um, and I would say it's some of the other vet schools also require different amounts. Some require an awful lot, some require kind of similar to, to London. But I'd really recommend doing it, even if as much as you can feasibly do it, it is difficult, difficult to get a place. Like Remy said, like lots of places I found never replied to me or just told me they couldn't accept me because of insurance or they just didn't want to didn't want to accept me. Um, because it's, it's really interesting to see what the job is like before you do it. Um, and if you can go into different places, because some of the practices I've been to, I, I wouldn't want to be a vet if that's where I had to work. They're kind of places where you work really, really hard. Um, the conditions are maybe very cramped and everyone's always shouting at each other and you think this is horrible. And then other places I've worked have been a dream and everyone works well together. You know, everyone works well with the animals, the clients are happy. And I think this would be great to be a vet here. So if you, if you go somewhere and you absolutely hate it, don't assume everywhere is, like that um and uh, just keep an open mind okay right we've got so many more questions to get through and i'm conscious that we want to try and wrap up in the next eight minutes or so so i'm going to try and limit you to 30 seconds for an answer here to try and get through them um lucy will there be any virtual open days at rvc yes um, we have just had one, so there's usually one in October before the BVET Med deadline, so there will be more uh, coming up, so do check on the RVC website for them. They give you an opportunity to have virtual tours around, hear from the lecturers, hear from the students, all the kind of stuff that you do on an actual open day. So yes, we do do them, and you can just see on our Twitter or on our webpage when they are. That's a good answer. Um, 
I know I want to be a surgeon. This isn't me. I know I want to be a surgeon, but humans or animals. Ooh. Really? Um, okay, so first of all, humans are one species, animals are loads of different species. Um, um, as well, to be a vet, you have to be able to work with all, the, all animals. And then as soon as you qualify, you can be like, no, I'm not touching a horse again. Um, so things to consider. Again, I think work experience because they're different different types of responsibility. One, you're working with the patient, one, you're working with the owner and also the patient if it's in veterinary. Okay, thank you. Um, two questions which are roughly the same, but let me ask Seth this one. Um, can you go on to work at a zoo or do you have to take another degree for that? And then to go to kind of the similar question, which might give me the same answer, is um, if anyone is familiar with zoology as a whole, how does a degree in veterinary science in general differ to that of zoology? Do you want to answer the first one, Seth? I'll answer the second. Sounds good. Uh, so you certainly can work in work in a zoo. Uh, some of the larger zoos are very competitive to get jobs at. Uh, some of them will offer internships first. That's where you kind of do a year where you do parts of you kind of work for less pay more hours you get exposed to lots they teach you lots um, and some some of the zoos will also offer residencies which is a similar thing but slightly longer so if you want to work in a zoo you definitely can you don't need to do an extra degree or anything but it will be very competitive and you probably need to do kind of extra work and really push yourself Yep, and that's kind of the same for any specialisation that you want to go into. You're likely going to have to do CPD, which is continued professional development, which is where you just learn on the job. So he's right that zoo uh, veterinary is really competitive, but there are people who do it. Um, would the question for me, what was it? Oh, zoology. Uh, what's the difference between zoology and veterinary science? Kind of like I said, zoologists or biologists or animal biologists, anybody who is in vet, they're going to be working on the population um, as a whole. They're going to be thinking about, you know, we're going to try and conserve cheetah. How do we do that? We're going to try and prevent a disease that's attacking frogs. How do we do that? Working with animals in captivity, thinking about welfare needs, all that kind of stuff as a population. Whereas vets and in the veterinary medicine degree, you learn how to work with an animal that comes to you and has a problem. So that might be an injury, it might be an illness, it might be a long-term disease that they're dealing with, but you're dealing with one animal. And veterinary is much more hands-on. I've worked with big cats, but I've never touched one because you don't touch wildlife really. Whereas obviously Seth and Remy in their work will be getting hands-on with the animals that they care for. Yep, okay, thank you. Um, this is for everyone. But I'll ask just Remy to answer this one in the interest of time. How did you cope with the workload from biology and chemistry A levels whilst maintaining good grades? What's the secret? Yeah. Um, I couldn't really figure it out. Or like I said, I had to reset my A levels. I think the jump from GCSE to A level it does hit you. Um, but I think the main thing is sorting out a timetable. Of course, you've got school to help with that. Um, talk to your teachers as well. If you don't understand something, just say, don't wait until the exam. Um, and also, um, I'd say, so personally, I like to use YouTube as well just to help with learning if you don't understand anything. Um, and also just work with your friends who are doing the same thing. Ask questions is the main thing I'd say. Yeah, some very good, I think, general advice there about, about coping with A-levels. Um, <laughs> this is another one on specialisms. So, Seth, perhaps you can answer this one. I want to be an equine vet. How do I specialise after doing the five or six year course? So after doing a degree, you would be absolutely qualified to be an equine vet. You can go straight into it. And I've got lots of friends who are working as equine vets. Equally, some of the more competitive parts of equine stuff, like working horse racing industry or like the really expensive dressage horses. Um, a lot of people will do an internship after that. So you work on a job for a year, less pay, lots of on-call hours, but you learn an awful lot in that year. Um, and you often you'll be working at a really good hospital. Um, so there's lots of routes afterwards, lots of options. Brilliant. OK. Um, does Remy think she should have gone straight into vet med or was doing vet nursing first a nice gateway into it? Uh, again, it depends on the person. But personally, for me, I think um, I wasn't, I guess you could say, clinically confident in myself. So I've not I've now got skills. I know that when I get to third year, I can put in a catheter, I can, I say, 
deal with emergencies uh, compared to your third year vets that have only just done work experience um, in a vet's like a few times a week. Um, so I feel a bit more confident in myself. So hopefully by the time I qualify, um, I should be a bit more confident and hopefully have a bit of an upper hand. But again, it's all about different experiences. So it's different to different people, what they can handle as well. Sure. Okay. Um, are there any other careers where you can work with animals but don't have to do science, Lucy? So there are. There are loads of different careers with animals. And one really good thing, and I know it sounds really, really basic, is to literally Google careers with animals because there are loads and loads of websites that list everything out. And everyone does think of kind of veterinary or zookeepery first. But zookeeper is something that you might want to look into if you're not super interested in science. I've got a lot of zookeeper friends from London Zoo, and some of them have done like PhD in a particular animal. Some of them left school at 16 and have worked their way up, and they know so much about the animals because they care for them every single day. So there's things like zookeeper, um, dog grooms, uh, falconer, falconers, people who work for the RSPCA and RSPB. You can work with guide dog training. There's loads and loads of different jobs out there, farriers, horse grooms, um, horse riding trainers, all different things. So you definitely can work with animals without having to do science. But if you want to go into veterinary and you know prescribing medicines again, you do have to do the biology and chemistry if you're at A-level. Yeah, Nicole, I think you've, you've, you've um, succinctly answered that one very well. Um, this one is asking unis in general, but you, know, you might be able to talk from an RBC perspective. You said that the third A-level um, after doing biology and chemistry wasn't that important. But do universities, well, are they going to prefer that someone's done maths? So, I mean, I, I can answer that in terms of us. And then obviously it's a caveat of this is just RBC. For us, we genuinely, for the entry requirements, we just want you to meet the minimum. So like work experience, we just need you to get over that threshold of 70 hours clinical, 70 hours non-clinical work experience. For entry requirements, we just need you to get three A-levels, A biology and chemistry included. Genuinely, even if it came to a point where we were choosing between two people, one had maths and one had French, there's no reason why we would choose the maths above that because we interview for our vet medicine and vet nursing candidates and we want to make sure that we're getting people who will be good vets. And the people with the highest grades or people who are really, really good at maths aren't necessarily going to be the best vets. We're trying to see if you know they've got uh, the right quality, things like empathy, things like being able to have a difficult conversation. So don't worry, we at the RVC are not going to select one A-level over another. Do look at different universities though, and they will say if they do prefer a specific A-level. But honestly, if you're gonna do better at French than you are at maths, do French. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Okay, no, another, another good succinct answer there. A couple of questions about work experience. What's the youngest you can be? So is 14 too young to do work experience? Do either of you guys have experience of doing it before 16? Yeah, at GCSEs, I think. Um, yeah, I'm sure it was in, I'm sure I did work experience um, when I did it at the at an animal sanctuary. But again, it depends on insurance and stuff like that. So some places have different policies, especially if you're working with large animals. Um, yeah. yeah. What about yeah. you, sir? Um, I'm not sure I went anywhere clinical like a vet practice that young, but I did do some work at stables and some farm work and things that young. Um, yeah, from what I know, you can do things that aren't clinical, like Sir says, um, stuff to do with horses and sometimes stuff at farms, um, because they, you know, they're not there's not dangerous things there. But at vets, because there are things like sharks, like needles, and again, medicines, you have to be over 16 for them to be able to let you into that environment. But you can definitely do things at, at stables. Loads of people do. Yeah, OK. And I, I guess really there's that formal work experience that would count towards your application. And there's that sort of less formal work experience, which on a very basic level might be looking after your neighbour's cat whilst they're on holiday, mightn't they? Um, but then you need to kind of get that formal experience as you go on. Um, oh, I really like this question, Seth. I'd love to be a vet, but I'm scared I will be squeamish with blood. How do I deal with that? Um, you do get used to it the first surgery when i was at cambridge when they were doing weird and wacky surgeries i saw a, um, a brain tumor removal from a cat and after that surgery i felt very squeamish very ill 
um, and had to go had to go to the toilets. Um, and certainly, like the first surgery that people do, especially even when you're quite far into the course, the first surgery that you're maybe scrubbed in on, so you're wearing lots of gowns, lots of gloves, you get really really hot. A lot of people will feel faint and hot from that. Um, and you do get used to it, you do get uh, kind of acclimatized to it. Um, although I'm still a little squeamish about needles and eyes, like when when you have eye ulcers and they have to do really intricate surgeries and that, oh, I don't I don't like that at all. Um, but you do get used to the kind of the, the blood and, and all of that. Yeah, okay. Thank you for that. I mean, I think there's some important points to make there that you're not all hardened to this at the age of 15. It's something that you do adjust <laughs> and, and get and get used to. Right, I've got a couple more questions to go. So let's just get those ones in um, whilst they can. These are quite specific to RVC. Is there a way to become a marine biologist with RVC? So as um, I showed you that picture of my friend Emily, who works in animal conservation, so she did the same degree as me at the RBC, so that was her second degree, the Wild Animal Biology Masters, and we are actually opening up a wild animal or wildlife health degree, so do keep an eye out for that, it's going to be coming up in the next few years and we'll be offering that, and that will be focusing on wildlife health and allowing you to learn all about animals from the basics up. So learning about cells and then going on to things like welfare and conservation. So you could definitely do a degree at the RBC and then go on to work in marine biology. Um, we don't have a specialist degree in it as other universities might do, but we definitely have researchers who work in that area that you could do projects alongside as well. So it's yeah. definitely a possibility. OK, um, if I did work experience at the end of my year 11, will that count for my work experience needed to become a vet? So it has to be ignoring this year because this year we've changed it because of the, the situation. Um, usually it has to be in the 18 months prior to your application. So you will be applying in October of year 13. And so, yes. 18 months before that is the spring of year 11. So yes, it will do. As long as it's within a year and a half of your actual application date, it will count. Okay, brilliant. And then, um, so just as i am asked the two final questions on them, I'm just gonna put a poll up. So for those of you that are watching live at the moment, there's a poll coming up on the screen here, and this is gonna be really good feedback for us now about how useful you found this session. Um, don't worry, all your camp, well, you, you're all still there. Um, Lucy, do I go to the campus near Hertfordshire to study the equine course? All right, okay. So uh, equine course, um, assuming they want to specialise as an equine vet, because you have to do the vet degree to become any kind of vet. You don't like pick a specialist degree when you start out. And if you're doing the vet degree, you go to the Camden campus for the first two years, and then you spend your last three years at the Hawkshead campus in Hertfordshire. And the idea is that in Camden, you learn all of the basics of the science and you do some animal handling and dissections. And then in uh, Hawkshead in Hertfordshire, you do three years of clinical work. So there you are learning how to work with the animals that are coming in to do the different surgeries. So that is where our equine hospital is based. And so, yeah, that's where you'll learn more about horses. But if you are doing the veterinary degree, veterinary medicine degree, you spend your first two years in Camden. Okay, thank you. So um, when we say equine, we're talking horses, aren't we? No other animals included within the equine group? Um, I guess you would include zebra, but I'm going to go ahead and assume they just mean horses. <laughs> yeah, okay, fine. And then the final question, by the way, thank you for voting. I'm going to close that down now so we can see everyone again. Um, Lucy, you spoke right at the very start about the gateway course, so there's been a question about that one. So the question that's come in is, and this is the final question, is the gateway course open to everyone? Um, how would you know if you are able to apply through the gateway course? So the best way is if you're interested in veterinary at all, look at all different universities. I'm not saying like you have to come to the RBC, but if you're interested in the veterinary gateway course, that's the one we offer. Look at our website, find Veterinary Gateway in the list, find the entry requirements and then go down and it'll get to a bit where it's widening participation criteria. And so like I said, the Veterinary Gateway is for people who we know have the potential to be amazing vets, but they may not have been able to achieve the high entry requirements that we ask for our veterinary medicine degree. And so there are certain criteria and you can look through and see if you meet them. Like I said, there are things like 
you're the first person in your family to go to university, um, you come from a low income household, or you come from a postcode where not many people go on to university. Those are some of them. There's also which school you go to or college or sixth form, they can all play into it, whether you're care experienced, all like that. And so you essentially figure out if you're eligible through those criteria. And if you have any questions at all, if you're not really sure whether you're eligible or you want to clarify something, we have the admissions team email on our website. They're my colleagues, obviously we're at home now, but I'm usually in the office with them. And they're so lovely and their job is to answer your questions. So if you have any worries at all about applications, you can talk to them. Thank you. Okay, Rob, well, that's answered all the questions. So thank you for a, submitting those questions for those of you in the audience now. Um, but secondly, thank you so much to Lucy, Seth and Remy for fielding those questions. Um, this session has been recorded. So if you want to watch it back again, you can do. Um, hopefully we're going to show you how you will find this on our HOP websites that's hopinto.co.uk um, you will find um, all of the previous webinars that we've been recording so we do one of these every week on a, on a different career um, but you can go back in and you can watch um, this one on YouTube um, so let me just finish by thanking a you guys in the audience for attending and hopefully you found it really really informative the results of the poll that you've just answered are really really positive um, so thank you for completing that as well um, and then finally a huge thank you to Lucy to Seth and to Remy for giving up their time and for sharing their experiences with you and keeping you really really well informed about careers in veterinary science so thanks so much to you guys um, thank you for watching and we look forward to seeing you again soon Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.